All right, this is grade five, unit two, lesson two. And in this lesson, uh, we're going to be sharing some more sandwiches and uh, continuing to use that idea of sharing sandwiches to understand and represent the relationship between division and fractions. Specifically, we're gonna be doing it with a lot of pictures Parents and teachers, at this point, we are not really getting into the heavy-duty algorithms and fancy math stuff. We're just really trying to understand uh, from a conceptual level how division and fractions and fair sharing relate to one another. So, you know, let's get started on this. And we're going to begin with about 10 minutes of a nice little warm-up. The idea is uh, parents and teachers, we're going to let students... Um, estimate do a little bit of estimation sorry i couldn't come up with the word <laughs> so if that big huge rectangle right here represents one whole we want students to estimate what fraction um, uh, is that blue piece right here what fraction is shaded in now parents and teachers um, at this point we don't need perfection we're not aiming for super duper accurate what we are looking for is evidence of students using correct fractional reasoning, meaning we want students to be thinking about, if I know this is the thing I'm trying to figure out, my question is how many of these fit in the entire whole? So if that entire rectangle, that entire rectangle is one whole, how many of these things fit into one entire whole? All right, that's the kind of thing we're talking. Um, we're going to be looking for here. We're we're not looking for um, precise answer answers here, uh, but we want students to give some sort of fraction that's a little too low, fraction that's a little too high, and then we want students to give their fraction that they think is is right on all right and that's it's about a 10 minute warm-up then our uh one of our two main activities uh this one about 15 minutes uh jada's family made sandwiches to share at a family celebration complete the table to show uh how much uh sandwich each to show Complete the table to show how much sandwich each person should get. Ah, we're missing the word how. That kind of totally freaked me out. Not that I'm being all picky because I would make mistakes too. Uh, show how much sandwich each person gets. All right, so we've got this nice table. We've got one sandwich being shared each time. And if one sandwich is being shared amongst two people, how much does each person get? And now parents and teachers, students might need to draw a picture of a sub sandwich right here and say, okay, if that is being shared by two people, how much is each person going to get? Oh, each person is going to get one half and written as a division statement, that's gonna be one divided by two. And then, of course, if we have three people sharing that sandwich, then it's going to look like that. And it looks like each person is going to get one third, which is one divided by three. And parents and teachers, you're getting the idea. St students are uh, getting a sense of how fractions and um Fractions and division relate and are how they're related to one another. So one sandwich being shared amongst four people is one fourth. That's one divided by four. And we are now seeing the pattern, which is one divided by five. Now it says, choose one row from the table and represent your thinking with a diagram. Now it is very likely, kind of like what I did up here, um, that students will have been doing those pictures in their journey uh, to answer those questions in the first place. So I'm just going to put it right there and say, all right, well, I just, I decided to do a, the row for one sandwich being shared amongst four family members. 
Now, what patterns do you notice in the table? Well, we're starting to notice some patterns and parents and teachers, we're gonna allow our students some time to kind of just look at the patterns, particularly looking at how fractions and division are related. All right, for our next main activity, now this one's gonna be kind of cool. It says uh, you are going to give students a set of cards and then students are going to be working in pairs uh, to find matches. All right. Now, what do we mean by matches? OK, so we're going to kind of go over here and we're going to look at what? There we go. And we're going to look at our cards. And uh, so parents and teachers, this is what you're going to have to print and cut out and per pair of students. So. Looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 cards on two pages that you're gonna need to print and cut up and put, the way I did this is I always, I put this into envelopes. I had a bunch of envelopes and uh, I would color code these so that it made it easy group. So I would put like group A, uh, uh, group one, group two, group three, group four, and I would write, uh, number one, number two, uh, number one on all of these cards. And then I would write a number two on all of these cards, meaning group two. That way, when I found a card on the ground, I could look at it and see what number I wrote on it and immediately know which envelope that card belongs in. That way I, I wasn't always dealing with um, partial sets and lost sets, kind of like a puzzle missing some pieces, right? Okay, so, but the idea is a students working in pairs are going to find some sort of connection between a picture, a statement, and a division. All right, so we've got a word statement and then we've got a number st statement and some pictures. And because we see that there's six pictures, but only four word statements and four number statements, um, the groups aren't, it's going to be a little funky. It's not like you're going to have one picture, one uh, number state, uh, word statement, and not one number st statement. Uh, yeah, there's going to be some messiness involved. So allow your students the opportunity to kind of experience that. All right. And so ultimately, that's going to be a lot of work where the students are creating their pieces. And then once they've are creating their matches and then once they've created their matches, uh, they are going to choose one set of their matched cards to do some thinking. All right. So I'm going to boom. There is a, an example of a partial set. I think this isn't an, a complete set. Anyway, it's good enough. All right. And the idea is to show or explain how the diagram and expression represent the number of sandwiches being shared. So parents and teachers, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna allow students the opportunity to explain how they think these three things go together, all right? As an example, we can see that we've got four sandwiches and each sandwich has been cut into three pieces. And I can see that person A is going to get four thirds. That's person, I'm gonna zoom in here. Person A gets four thirds. And then I can see that person B gets four thirds. And then I can see person uh, C gets four thirds. And there is an example of four sandwiches being shared amongst three people and each person getting four of those thirds. Now, they could have said they get one whole sandwich plus one third because we can see that it takes three pieces to make one whole sandwich. So even though person B, it's kind of spread across a couple of sandwiches, Three pieces equals one whole sandwich plus one extra third. And then person C, it's easy to see that they get one whole sandwich plus one extra third. And uh, we want to allow, to allow students the opportunity to share their thinking about how they can see 
that these are all together as a matched set. Then it says, show or explain how the diagrams and expressions represent the number of people sharing the sandwiches. So how to represent the number of people sharing. So the idea is, oh, the, the divide by three. Oh, the shared by three people. And lastly, each of these sandwiches are being cut into three pieces. And that's how we can see that in our example right here, um, it's being shared by three people, all right? But the, the answer wasn't three people. The answer is how do you show in each of these cases that we know that three people are doing the sharing? How much sandwich does each person get in this situation where, well, I already said it up here. Each person in my example gets four thirds, which is the same thing as one whole sandwich plus one third of a sandwich. Parents and teachers, we're going to allow our students to write some sort of reflection to their future forgetful self. And here is our cool down. Uh, four sandwiches. Four sandwiches are equally shared by five students. How much sandwich does each student get? So if we have four sandwiches, one, two, three, four, and those four sandwiches are being shared by five people, how much does each person get? Well, we can cut each sandwich into fifths. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And so each person, we've got person A, B, C, D, E. Then we've got person A, B, C, D, E. And so each person is getting a fifth of each sandwich. A, B, C, D, E. And I can see overall that each person will get four fifths of a sandwich. And because I can see that, for example, person A got one fifth here, one fifth here, one fifth and one fifth. So that's four fifths, right? A division expression. Well, that's going to be four sandwiches divided by five people. And so parents and teachers, we want students to start to see that relationship between division and a fraction. And our one problem, it's problem nine uh, on that one page here. It says four hikers equally share three liters of water. How many liters of water does each hiker drink? All right, so we've got a liter. Let's call that a liter. And we've got four of them, one and then two. And then three and four. All right. Oh, no, four hikers are sharing three. So there you go. There's our three liters of water. And we want to know how much water does each person get. And so let's do blue, of course, because we're talking about water. And so if they're going to share this liter of water, that means each person gets one fourth. Each person gets one fourth. And again, each person gets one fourth. And so now we can see that person A, B, C, and D are each sharing equally each liter. And so we can see that each person gets three fourths of a liter of water. And then uh, question B. Four hikers equally share five liters of water. How many liters of water does each hiker drink? So now we get five liters. So there's our two, and there's our two, and then I only need one, so I'm gonna delete one of these. So there is our five liters of water, and we're still sharing with four people. So what does that mean? Well, person A can have one entire liter. Person B, person C, and person D, they each get their 
entire leader. Now, how are they going to, these four people, going to share that last leader? Well, they're going to share it in equal fourths. And so now person A, person B, person C, and person D. So how much does, uh, how much water does each person get this time? Each person gets one liter plus one fourth. Now, another way they could have said it is they could have said five fourths. And I'll let you figure out what would your picture look like to show that each person gets five fourths, which is the exact same amount as one and one fourth. And that, that wraps up uh, grade five, unit two, lesson two.